All right, just a quick video to finish up the uh, AK build that I did. Uh, I went ahead and had everything stripped apart and parker I parkerized it. Uh, there were a few assembly issues that I had. Uh, number one, the uh, hammer spring wasn't very strong, so I got uh, a set of wires, twisted them myself, and uh, after about the fourth attempt, I got one that works good. So it's uh, quite a bit stronger than the stock one was. I put this uh, brass casing over the handle because I didn't want to spend 24 bucks for a piece of aluminum. It's a uh, 264 wind mag. It fit. Um, made an oversized handle here. And the spring I lost. I have no idea where the hell it went to, but that is half of a AR-15 hammer spring that uh, I just trimmed the size and fitted in there with another pin see what else. Oh, because the uh, because the main body, the receiver, is one and a half millimeters thick on each piece instead of one millimeter, the arm that went through here was too short. I could not get the pins to fit, so I could not secure it from coming loose. So I had a friend of mine make a jig out of a piece of copper tubing, or excuse me, it was a piece of solid copper, and I had him cut this in half, so I MIG welded it back up a little bit wider, so now it fits. Um, oh, as far as the barrel spacing, I had it perfect to where the go gauge was just a little snug. And uh, after I parkerized the barrel, it was really snug, but apparently there is a number of foot pounds you're allowed to force the bolt in with and after I cycled the rounds a few times it loosened up a little bit so the head spacing is uh, about as near perfect as I can get it but uh, yeah it's uh, not too bad for my first build I guess uh, there are certain spots where uh, I need to reparkerize it again because uh, I had to end up trimming the back here because the cap wouldn't fit. Um, what else? What else? Oh, the ejector lever, the thing that sticks out to eject the rounds. I machined or I cut it and ground it to fit the bolt, not realizing that the bolt would actually be further away from it than it really is. So every time uh, the bolt had come back, sometimes the round would not, it would not eject. So it was, uh, more often than not, it would try and shove two rounds back into the barrel. So I ended up using my MIG welder to make it bigger again. Now it's about the same size as it was originally. So if you're going to build one of these, do not trim the ejector until you have everything together. Um, when you adjust everything and get it to where it's perfect, realize if you parkerize it or paint it or whatever, some clearances are going to get tighter. Uh, there were some issues I told the uh, flat spot guy about, which was the little holder thing here was not shaped appropriately and it didn't think it would fit, which of course it fits fine. It, it is shaped a little different, but it works. Uh, same thing with the, um, the safety lever stop. Uh, shaped a little bit different, but damned if it didn't work perfect, so uh, I have to take back any of the it didn't fit type of things. Oh, also, uh, when you get these, you're going to have to trim the, uh, the bolt guides, bolt carrier guides, and also right here where this fits in, you're going to have to trim the hell out of that to get that notch in there so that this will fit. But, I really like the flat spot. Oh, and when I was putting the barrel back in to set the head spacing, messing with the barrel and the trunnion on its own out of the receiver is not so bad. I mean, you can fudge things with a bolt or, you know, put a spacer here, spacer there, but once I had the trunnion riveted into the receiver, it was near impossible to try and get something to hold that damn trunnion so I could press the barrel in. And I got so frustrated, I said, screw it, 
and I just put the I, I just put the receiver in the press and it worked fine. It pressed the bolt, or excuse me, it pressed the barrel into the trunnion fine. It didn't warp the uh, lower. I guess the 1.6 millimeter makes it that much tougher. So I did not need a special jig to hold the trunnion so I could press it back in. And yeah, this thing is sturdy as hell. Um, when I MIG welded this, I used flux core wire, and the flux core wire leaves a porous weld. See little dots and divots all over the place. Not only that, but the wire is the transition zone between where the wire melted into the lower and the lower itself. You can see is a ring, and all along here I have rings. Um, on my AR-15 lower, you can see some spots where I'd used the flux core wire where it's all porous, and then there's a couple of spots where you can't even, I mean, you can tell it's welded, but you can't even see the difference in coloration. Uh, so yeah, non-flux core wire is best. So uh, yeah, and there's still a few things I got to reparkerize because I did change out the two spacers down here. I did not rivet these, I bolted them just because I didn't have the appropriate rivet uh, tool. I made my own. So pretty much I'm going to take it apart eventually one of these days and uh, reparkerize the back half where everything got ground and cut because I had assumed everything was going to fit proper and then parkerized it and I should have completely assembled everything after it was sandblasted to uh, verify. But that's it. Um, AK-63, it's, uh, oh, another thing, because I made the hammer spring, it is so stiff, it acts as a bolt hold open, and you just give it a little shove, but yeah, now, as long as the trigger's pulled, it won't hold it open down. But once you release it, so technically I have a bolt hold open accidentally. But that's it. That is my AK-63D completed with the flat spot and I am so glad I welded it rather than having to try and bend it because I could see misalignments happening all over the freaking place if you didn't bend it just right. And that is my third lower. The first one I completely buggered up. The second one was for experimentation. I mean, they're so cheap. Uh, third one was uh, my assembled one. So that's it. Uh, post any questions in the bottom.